of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Ash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. <laughs> Friends, as you know, millions of people all over America enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day. In offices, shops, and factories, on farms, in mines, in oil fields, folks find Wrigley's Spearmint helpful while they work, and they enjoy it other times, too. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint are glad that their product is making life a little easier and pleasanter for so many people, and they're glad to be able to bring you this radio program, Life with Luigi, which, like Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, is brought to you for your enjoyment and satisfaction. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Vasco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, in America, everybody is read the magazines. They got a bigger ones, you can take your time to read. They got a picture magazines, you can read it faster. Then there's a digest. That's to save them more time. <laughs> and now they got a teeny weeny ones like a quick. That's for you in a very big hurry. <laughs> Most of people read the front of the magazine. I'm a, not like to read the front. I'm a like to read the back. They got such a wonderful advertisement. There they tell you how to play the ukulele in a ten easy lessons. How to grow mushrooms in you on a cellar. And a how, if you buy a home a jig or so, you can build yourself up a four-story house. <laughs> the last night I'm going to read the one was a very interesting. Picture does show you strong man who's wearing old rug made from a leopard. He's full of bumps and muscles, and he's a hold his breath in like he's going to explode any minute. <laughs> and he's to say, how you like to look like me. He says, with the my course by mail, you get a six inches of a muscle for your chest. <laughs> Mamma mia, isn't a wonderful country, America, where they send you muscles to the post office? <laughs> <laughs> but advertisement that interests me most was the one about the movies. It's getting me so excited, I'm not able to sleep all night. If you can write a simple letter, you can write for the movies. Mary Chase received one million dollars for Harvey with Jimmy Stewart. Mama me a million dollars and just for writing a simple letter. Hollywood is looking for new writers. Ten thousand, twenty thousand, fifty thousand is paid every day for a good story. Will you be next? Yes, I'm going to be next. How am I going to get this money? Sit down, Nano, and write us a story outline. If it has merit, we will tell you so. If not, we will also tell you. That's a fair. But don't wait. Write today. Today. Right now. Right now. Right now. So, Mamma Mia, I'm going to write to you letters every week, so I am knew I'm going to write the story. I was so excited that, that when I saw my good friends outside of school, I'm going to hardly talk straight. Just the Hollywood Olsen. I'm so excited. He's all about the Hollywood. Ah, and Luigi, it... calm yourself. I've never seen you so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, go slow and tell us everything. Oh, now, now, don't jumble your words and proceed judiciously. All right. Uh, here, uh, here's the advertisement. If I'm going to write the letter like a Harvey, I'm going to get a million dollars because he was a made a picture with a Mary Stewart. Him, uh, Luigi, are you for shimmer? <laughs> <laughs> no, look, see. See, it says here. Huh? We can sell you story... For $25,000. Mm, that's a lot of money. Luigi, if you really want to make money from the movies, don't write stories. Get the popcorn concession. <laughs> no, 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 friends. My mind is made up. In the Castello Mare, I was always tell little stories to the kiddies, and, and they would laugh and cry. Maybe I can do the same thing now and get rich. Sure, Luigi, there's one thing to tell your friends stories and another thing to write a moving picture. Yeah, I hate to say it, but for once, I agree with Olsen. <laughs> Just a second, fellas. Writing is a talent. 
Anybody could have it. Why should we discourage Luigi? If that's what he feels to do, he should go ahead and do it with our blessing. Joe, oh, your uh, I guess so. Himmel, this is getting embarrassing. That's the second time I agree with all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, but thank you, friends. Only thing I'm like to ask you. You got in a movie so much, may maybe you can give me an idea what the kind of short story I should write. Well, Luigi, there's hundreds of plots. Ah, sure, they are changing them all the time. Yeah. Now, take the last picture I saw. Yeah, first the boy meets the girl, then the boy loses the girl, and then the boy gets the girl. Uh -huh. But the one I saw before that, the boy met the girl, and then the boy lost the girl, and then the boy got the girl. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but last week I saw one where the boy meets the girl, and then the boy loses the girl, and then the boy... You know something, Luigi? I think pictures are the same, and I'm changing. <laughs> oh, shorts, movies, I bet they did never. Uh, Luigi, as you know, I never do things piecemeal. And having gone to the movies for many years, I have made quite a study about it. There he goes, the Swedish Sam Goldman. <laughs> now, I am not a journalist, nor do I ever intend to enter the field of journalism. But I will be real happy to pass my information on to you. Oh, what a show off! <laughs> no, please, uh, Olsen, I would appreciate it very much if you could tell me anything. Well, no, the main thing, it seems to me, is that pictures, they, they copy from each other. Huh? Everything in Hollywood, that goes in cycles. Huh. First there was war cycle pictures, huh? and then came the gangster cycle, then the psychological cycle. Oh, now just the plain bicycle. <laughs> sure, that was ridiculous. Yeah? Did you ever heard of the bicycle thief? <laughs> Luigi, smile. I'm only fooling. <laughs> no, the is absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to tell a successful story, pick out a big picture and write something like it. What about King Solomon's Mines? That's a very big picture. Yo, ho, undoubtedly, that will start a cycle. <laughs> However, Luigi, you should change the scene of your story so as, as not to, to copy it too much. I'm going to stand, Olsen. And I'm going to see that picture tonight. Ah, Luigi, you're going to love that. You know, a girl comes to Africa to find her lost husband. Oh. Well, she hires the hero <laughs> to, be, to be her guide. She hires that hero, see? And, and through the hot jungle, they fight, and they fight, always arguing. Yeah. He is angry, she is angry, and there's vicious natives, tigers, snakes, crocodiles. <laughs> They come to the blazing desert, marching, marching, marching. And, and the heat, the heat is terrible. And then... Joel, no, don't stop me, Olsen. I can't wait to see how the picture comes out. <laughs> well, it's time for us to go into the classroom. But Luigi, kidding aside, all this talk should give you some idea what to write about. Oh, yes, and a thank you, friends. I'm going to get some wonderful ideas already. And the best of all, I'm already going to name it for my story. You have? Yeah, I'm going to start writing as soon as I'm coming home. Is it going to be the cycle of a king of Solomon's mind? Oh, that's wonderful, Luigi. And what will you call it? Queen of Sheba's Iceberg. <laughs> My friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Hey, where you been hiding out these last few days, my little banana notes? <laughs> <laughs> Seems I'm going to see you at all. I'm been a busy writing, Pasquale. I'm writing a movie. You writing a movie? That's right. Oh, you want this to send you free passes, huh? Pasquale, you don't understand. I'm writing a movie story, and for this, I'm going to get the $25,000. Oh, well, that's a different. That's a more sensible. You're going to get a 25 <laughs> Luigi, I think you've got a loose leaf in your cabbage you had. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you wasn't going to say that. You really think of the movies, the people, that they pay you money for what you write? Pasquale, this is America. Everybody's got the same chance to make the money. Sure, sure. All they need is a print and a press and some green paper. Alex, <laughs> <laughs> so don't be a stupid bull, but you've got... Pasquale, to... I'm, I'm too busy now with my movie story to argue with you. How do you like such a man? He's a serious. All right, I go along with the gab. What kind of a story are you writing? Eh? It's called The Queen of Sheba's Iceberg. 
Queen the sheep is the iceberg? That's right. Ooh, what a green horn of boob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pasquale, make it fun. But when I'm going to get the 25000 for this story, you're going to stop a laughing. Stop a laughing? From the shock, I'm going to stop a breathing. <laughs> How are you going to make $25,000? When I'm a mail my story to the school. School? Yeah. That's who I'm going to send it to. And if they like it, they're going to sell it for me to Hollywood to make a move. Queen of Sheep is Iceberg. That's eh? right. <laughs> I can just see it on the screen. Everybody's going to run home because it's going to remind them they forgot to defrost the icebox. <laughs> Pasquale, you know, you're terrible to, to make somebody feel so low. Oh, Luigi, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I just don't like to see you wasting your time. You should have tried things in which you got a special talent for. Pasquale, what do you think I'm got a special talent for? <laughs> Being a husband? <laughs> <laughs> what? Nothing, just a <laughs> Still wants to marry my Rosa? Well, all right, all right. I'm going to go now. Goodbye. Goodbye, Pasquarian. Wait. Uh, you know, mad? No, of course not. I... Oh. What's the matter? I'm going down to the post office. I'd be glad to mail your story to the school. To get there faster, you'll get your money sooner. Oh, uh, well, sure, sure, Pasquale, here. And, and, and thank you, Pasquale. Thank you, Mr. Shakespeare. Goodbye. <laughs> Little pumpkin ahead who don't want to be a husband. He wants to be a writer, eh? Well, I fix him... I go round the back away so he's going to see me not the mail in his little story. And now I'm going to work out of my plans. Rosa! 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 You called me, Papa! You <laughs> 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 call me, Papa. Who do you think I'm called? Put down that turkey leg. You want to weigh 250 pounds forever? Oh, no, Papa. I'm still growing. <laughs> oh, well, I've got to go through. Rosa, don't ask her no questions. You go down to Joe's pool room and come back with a Doc Evans. Doc Evans? Yes, a Doc Evans. The fellow used to be an actor. Tell him I want to see him right away. And don't let the Luigi see you. Go on, hurry up. All right, Papa. <laughs> now, let me see what that dope wrote. Dear Carter School of Journalism, close to you find my story, Queen of Sheba's Iceberg. <laughs> when I get it through fixing up a letter for Luigi, and he gets a visit from a man who he thinks is a Hollywood producer, it'll break that little pup squeak's heart. Ooh, I'm a mean man. <laughs> but I'm not going to help myself. I got a fat daughter. I got to be this way. <laughs> Before we return to Life with Luigi, we'd like to mention the enjoyment you can get by chewing delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. You know, there are lots of times when you're not really hungry but still want something to chew on that tastes good and gives you a little pickup. Well, a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum solves your problem perfectly. It's chock full of delicious, long-lasting, real spearmint flavor. It's refreshing and satisfying, and yet it doesn't fill you up or spoil your appetite. So when you want a taste treat between your meals... Be wise. Chew a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Remember, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is good and good for you. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, you're not going to believe what's to happen. The carpet right in the school is they got to my story, and they liked it very much. So much, they think I'm going to become a second of Shakespeare. Just imagine, Mamma Mia, how is it going to sound when I'm right to you? Your loving son, Luigi Shakespeare, the little immigrant. <laughs> it's a good, huh? 
But anyway, I'm got the busy and I... Luigi, my fellow boob. <laughs> they we missed you in school the last few nights. Well, sure, sir. I'm had a very good reason for not to come. What reason? You missed three days of education already. You are starting to look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been working day and night on another movie story. Don't tell me you already sold your first one. No, but I'm a... Wait. Huh? I better show you the letter I'm got. Here. Who is this? From the Carter School. Yeah. Here the story shows great promise. Uh-huh. Not finished enough yet. Yeah. Feel another story for Spencer Tracy. Uh-huh. Biographically picture big that... Him and Luigi, they ain't kidding me. No, no, that's the right. They ain't the shirt, sir. They ain't. I'm a shooter because you see on the bottom is to say, yeah. big Hollywood producer is coming to Chicago. Huh. If a story is ready for him, maybe he's a bite right away. And that's why I'm working so much. Oh, I can't believe that. <laughs> Who knows, someday I'll be able to say, Luigi Basco, I knew him when he was nothing. I oh, sure sit down and say that. Uh, to you, I'm always uh, going to be nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, Luigi, frankly, we all thought the whole idea was silly. But it shows you, in America, anybody can be a nobody who's a somebody, or anybody else who's somebody's nobody. <laughs> you know, I'm a little for shimmered, my there. No, Reggie, I'm so happy for you. Oh, oh thank you, you should say. And who knows? Uh, maybe someday I'm going to write the movie story about you. Yes, sure. All about my life in the delicatessen business. Yes, right. right. And, and you can call it the Livermore story. Oh, that's yeah. good. <laughs> it's going to have one beginning and two ends. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mr. Basco, I don't know whether you know me or not. My name is Arnold Baxter from Hollywood. Arnold Baxter, Hollywood the producer? The one the school has told me about? Mamma mia. That's right. What's he say? What's he say? He's almost fainted. <laughs> <laughs> you was uh, laughing at something, uh, Mr. Baxter? <coughs> no, 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 just coughing. <laughs> now, uh, Mr. Basco... Uh, the school tells me you have a very interesting story you're working on. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm working on it today and night. You must be good and tired. Mr. Baxter, I'm almost full of sleep under my feet. <laughs> he's so tired, he's almost caving in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you suppose it's big enough for movie size? About 300 pages? 300? Mamma mia. That's a girl to kill him with a white cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, all right, I'm, I'm, I suppose I'm going to work even hard if, if you're interested in it. Well, I am, Mr. Basco, definitely. My studio is looking for a story for Spencer Tracy. Ooh. Well, I'm going to get it. That's a... Uh, well, uh, I'm going to like it to brag, but this is a very good. No, I like to hear you talk like that. The best writers are egomaniacs. Maniacs? All right, if you want, I even be crazy for you, too. <laughs> now, get this, Mr. Basco. I'll be at your antique shop tomorrow at 7. Have your story ready to be read then. Tomorrow? Well, well all right. I work all day and all night. And, uh, and uh, thank you, Mr. Baxter. Thank you. And, uh, and uh, goodbye. Goodbye. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> you should have heard him, Busco. What? Come on. He's fallen for the whole thing. You all crying and singing. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> oh, to God. Now I'm going to go into the shop and feed him some more bait. <laughs> I feel terrible to treat Luigi this way, but I make a resolution. Once he's my son-in-law, I won't make him suffer no more. With a roast, that's a plenty of suffering for one man. <laughs> well, Luigi, how's the big Hollywood writer? You, uh, got any phone calls from Lassie today? Are you still making it fun, huh, Pasquale? All right, do you want to know something? I'm received the letter to tell me to work on a story for the producer. And now, just two minutes ago, this same famous Hollywood producer, he said he's coming to my story tomorrow, uh, my story tomorrow, and read my story. Now, what do you say to that? Luigi, I'm a flabbergasted. Simply flabbergasted. <laughs> I suppose you're going to arrange a big party for this uh, producer. Party? What are you talking about? Well, you've got to make him press, you know, to make him feel like he's a big shot. You know, these are Hollywoods of people. Oh. They always entertain, and they expect that you should, too. Oh. You should have take out all of your money you got in the bank and buy a lot of food and make a big splash. Yeah, but Pasquale, with the money I'm going to get to splash you with, and nobody's even going to get the wet. <laughs> 
All I'm got is a $30. Well, spend it. Thirty dollars for a party is not bad. Get a refreshment, a wine, invite up all your school chumps. Uh -huh. Soft enough for the producer. Don't take a chance. No. Hey, hey, Pasquale, I think you got an idea. I'm going to take out the money and make a bigger party. You want to come? Luigi, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Is it going to be like you coming out of party? In the middle of you reading the story, the producer feels it so good, he says, Stop! Here's your $25,000 if you were a millionaire. Oh, Pasquale, I'm, I'm so happy, and, and thanks for your advice. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> This is a lovely party, Mr. Basco. I'm a glad you could come, Miss Spaulding. What What do you think of uh, the Hollywood producer, Mr. Baxter? Well, I can't really make up my mind, but frankly, I'm a little skeptical. Luigi, to me, he looks like a bum. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Schultz, he's, he's going to hear you. Yeah, but the bum is money. That's the difference. And Luigi, if he shouldn't offer you 25000 but twenty-four, take first and bargain afterwards. <laughs> Here he comes. Shh, quiet. Oh, quiet. Now, Mr. Basco, that's a lovely table you put out with, but you really shouldn't have gone to all this trouble for me. I was... I was in no trouble, Mr. Baxter. Uh, Mr. Baxter, if I'm going to send you more stories in Hollywood... What's your home address where I'm sure to send it? Uh, why, 192 at uh, Beverly Drive. Uh, but don't worry, you won't have to send it. I have a feeling I may take you out there. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, I, I've got to catch a plane in an hour, Mr. Basco. Uh, would you like to read your story to everyone now? Read it to, to everyone? I'm a thought you was going to read it by yourself. Uh, yes, I know, but I'd like to get an audience's reaction. Come on, come on, Mr. Genius, to make with a story. Uh, my, my friends... Uh, Mr. Baxter is asking me to read my story to all of you. So if you please take your seats, I'm going to begin right away. All right, I'm ready. Read your masterpiece. All right. My story is about a man we all know. I take a guess of what it is. Uh, the George Washington story. No, no, Pasquale, you're wrong. My picture is called The Life of a Great Man. The Pasquale story. What? Oh, I'm a really flabbergasted. <laughs> Luigi, you spent all of this time writing a story about me? That's right, Pasquale. And I'm a hope you like it. Now, the picture is a first to show a little boy in a wine field in Italy. And he's working very hard underneath the hot sun. And in the last scene, we see the President of the United States. He's standing in front of a big monument. He's a pull of the cord... Covers it come off, and we see big 50-foot statue of Pasquale. And on the bottom is written, To a great man who's never thought of himself. Only other people. The words is a fade out, the line is a come on the screen, is a gave a big roar, and the pitch is off. <laughs> but that's wonderful. But do you think Spencer Tracy is going to want to play Pasquale? <laughs> <laughs> Shall I get up and laugh in his face now? No, you dumb belly. You'll be laughing in my face. Just to beat it. I'll pay you off for later. All right. Uh, well, Mr. Basco, I've got to make my plane. Uh, about the story, well, uh, I don't think we can use it. Uh, goodbye. What oh, don't you like that? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, everybody. And Luigi. I'm a not in the picture business, but that can't stop me from buying a story. Luigi? Would you do me a favor? Sure, Pasquale. What is it? I like it to buy your story for a hundred dollars. Well, thank you, Pasquale. Here, I'm gonna put the story in an envelope, and it's yours. And here's your cash, one hundred dollars. Thanks. Thank you, Luigi. Well, uh, I, I gotta go now. Goodbye. We'll go to Goodbye. 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 Goodbye, Pasquale. <laughs> Miss Balding, I'm a suppose you think I'm a fool, huh? Well, Mr. Basco, I must admit this whole thing has been a strange experience. I didn't want to discourage you on your writing venture, but I do think you'll have to continue with your night school compositions a little longer before you're a screenwriter. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm a think I'm a learn, Miss Spaulding. Don't try to do what you don't know. Don't feel badly. Even though I found your story very confusing, you still made $100 on it, so let me compliment you. Don't compliment me, Miss Spaulding. Compliment the Pasquale. What do you mean? Well, I am really wrote the Washington story. But when I saw the producer, I changed it. 
What? Did you think you knew the producer's desire? No, I'm a just a thought. I'm a new the producer. <laughs> what? Yeah. I'm a once saw him in a Joseph Puller room. But I'm a wasn't so sure, so so I'm asking him as a Hollywood address a faster. He's a give me the same number as the pool room. Hundred and ninety-two. <laughs> then, then when he said hundred and ninety-two, I was assured. When I'm a read the story, I'm a said anything that's a come into my head. What the Pasquale's a got on the paper, that's all about the Washington. Mr. Vasco. Well, a hundred dollars ain't the twenty-five thousand, Miss Spaulding. But to out the smart the Pasquale, hats are worth a million. <laughs> had enough for with this writing for the movies. I'm going to put the Pasquale's $100 back in the bank. And with the money, I'm going to bought the more magazines. It's a funny thing that the same night, I'm going to saw the same advertisement. But when that the voice is said... If you can write letters, you can write for the movie. And I'm going to say, if you can write the letters, you can write to your mom. And who knows, Mamma Mia? Which one is more important? So here's another letter from me. Your loving son, Luigi Basco, the immigrant. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they want to remind you that no matter what kind of work you do, you'll find times every day when a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum will be a real help to you. You see, chewing on a piece of gum is a natural, enjoyable way to help relieve pent-up nervous tension. It seems to make your work go along smoother and easier. Then, too, the lively, delicious flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you extra enjoyment. So, to get more satisfaction out of your daily work, enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. It's a treat you can enjoy with both hands free, and it helps you feel and work your best. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Mr. Howard. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Derman. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Mary Ship as Miss Spaulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluster. You know, there's a youngster somewhere who needs a big brother. His symptoms may be truancy, running with a bad gang, giving his teachers a bad time. But whatever the reason, he may be fatherless or just an unhappy, unfortunate boy. The big brothers of America are ready to help. Many young boys today are headed for disaster. Let's make their future and ours a happier, better one by giving them the guidance and affection they need now. No other organization approaches the problem of juvenile delinquency in the personal, individual way that the big brothers do. And that need is increasing. Be a big brother yourself or work toward the formation of more big brother associations. All of us should support this work as generously as we can. Address mail to Big Brothers of America, Philadelphia 3, Pennsylvania. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>